my fellow comic book collectors. It's Alan, the comic collector geek, and I'm extra geeky today because I'm wearing still wearing glasses. Um, <laughs> but I'm joined with uh, Mark Olroyd uh, from jolly old England, and um, we are going to show you guys the hottest Silver Age comics of the week. It's a pretty interesting list. A couple that are on the list are me sort of checking in, checking in on some speculation. I just wanted to see how certain books performed speculatively. And um, there's a few um, arachnids for Mark because I he was getting a bit of withdrawal. So uh, yeah, so there's some fun stuff on the list. I think it should be a pretty good list. So. Right, okay, well, let's, uh, let's share the screen and have a look. Um... Where are we going? We are going not where. There. So do you know what this is? It's Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. Uh, is it a special one? It is a special one. I saw it when I saw it's it. Actually, I thought... It's a great cover. I don't know. Let's have a look. What does it it's say? Right. You tell me, Alan. What's special about it? It's the very first gold key comic. Wow. Okay. There you go. That's gold key issue, mm -hmm. 1962. And uh, when I saw the price, actually, I thought the price was pretty low uh, because it's a fairly high grade. Like, um, yes, it's an eight five. Is it a file copy? Yes, it is a file copy. Yeah, it must be. Why did they start the numbering with eighty six? You'd imagine if you were launching a new publishing company that you'd start with number one. Well, there is a bit of a story there. Um, so Gold Key came out of, um, uh, you know, Dell. You know, it went Dell and then Gold Key. Right. And what happened was um, Dell had the rights to publish certain titles like Bugs Bunny, uh, some Disney stuff, a um, whole bunch of things. It had like licensing and all that licensing fell through and then Gold Key got created. Okay, so yeah. Gold Key kind of picked up some of the numbering from the Dell series. Okay, so this is this is this is that. So if you looked at Bugs Bunny eighty five, it's a it's a Dell book. Right, got it. Yeah, well, it's a great cover. I have to say, if you're gonna if you're gonna start publishing, then and there's worse covers in the world to start with than this. Yeah, I mean it's a cute one. You know, we got him. Playing the violin, playing the what is it cello? Not cello, but it's like the the mini cello, whatever that is. Yeah, viola. Yeah. Was it a double um, bass? <laughs> yeah. Somebody, you know, when we're going to get in some somebody in the comments are going to be like, "Oh, you guys are idiots! This is the blah blah blah." And I'm like, okay, I don't I know. Think it's a double bass. Is. Okay, we'll go with the double bass. <laughs> Final answer. Double bass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, very, yeah. very nice. But so, it's, it's one that most people don't know. Like, I've seen this in bins, and people just don't know what it is, and you can pick it up usually fairly affordably. Uh, when people know what it is, it usually is, you know, obviously more expensive. Well, hang on. This is 8.5 only sold for $139. That's crazy. I know. I, I think it's I think it's low. So we're going to see. Is it low? Or is oh, it, look, this is has it? got a fantastic back cover as well. Gold King yeah. did this with some of their early ones. They, they yeah. did the adverts on the back. They had a, a poster. Yeah, I love that. I love that they did that, where they removed the trade dress and then yeah. they... Yeah, yeah and they the, this on one's the first... even better because they zoom in on it. So. Yeah, they did it on the first uh, Star Trek. The first four or five Star Treks. That's to. true, yeah. I really like those first Star Treks with the photo covers. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Solar, Man of the Atom, they've got posters on the back of the first seven or eight issues. And, yeah, I was thinking uh, Turok as well. Yeah. So, um, okay, so yeah, so let's see. How, how did this one perform? Well, I guess there aren't any more of these. Uh, but anyway, let's have a look. Oh, no, there are. Um, oh, it actually did well. Yeah, well, it's the th there's three of these in this grade, uh, and it's done okay. Well, it's done very well. You could have got this for twelve dollars back in twenty sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> That's people. crazy. Okay, so up like a hundred times. Yeah, uh, ten record. times, ten times, ten times. I mean, we're starting That's... with the record, Alan. Okay, okay. I would have thought this was down just because I, I, 
I forgot how much I didn't pay that much for my copy. I just would assume that it would be a more valuable book uh, just because it is, you know, it's a gold key. I I've, I think very undervalued. I'm really surprised. Mm -hmm. at that. How many on the census? 24. 24. I mean, geez, people. This is where you put your money, you know, put, you know, your college funds, everything. Invest in this comic. That's I, what Mark says. I, I, I didn't say that. I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I, I think I think at $124 for an 8.5, the first ever gold key comic, that is a <laughs> good, good investment. Yeah, it's a fun one. I don't know. I, I like it. So, uh, yeah. So we're not giving investment advice here, but uh, Mark is. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I only, so, I only suggest investments in things like Bam Bam covers and um and, well, yeah. and double, double bases with Bugs Bunny. Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, a date with Millie. Yeah. I saw this one. I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. Right. A date with Millie. It's not like it's not a key issue. There's nothing special about it. It's just like um, the reason I put this one on the list is, uh, you know, this is early Atlas. This is like um, like like early Silver Age, yeah, right? So April second, sixty. On this, it's got one of those um, stamps on it. Yeah. So um, the thing is, these are those kind of books where uh, Marvel kind of went all in on the good girl. Yeah. Um, a date with Millie, Millie the model, um, Patsy Walker, all those kind of books. They had a, they were doing more Good Girl than they were superhero at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah, and um, you know these books are actually fairly valuable as a result. Like, uh, there's there are collectors for this stuff, and you know you think of these books and you think, oh, maybe they're in the you know the dollar bin kind of level. Because like, they're just they're, they're girl books, right? Yeah. But um they're actually quite valuable. Like uh that's why I put this one on the list. I just wanted to showcase it a bit for people. Um I think this is Dan DiCarlo art, I believe. Just looking at the style. No, it's not. It's or is it Stan Gold Goldberg? Book. Yeah, okay. So it was either Stan Goldberg or yeah, those those are the two main ones. I mean, who do you think this comic was aimed at? It's it, it's not obviously aimed at girl. You know, the girls' ones like True Romance and um, things like that are. But a date with Millie is this good girl art appealing, appealing to teenage boys? I mean, you know, <laughs> this little hottie over here is appealing to a fourteen-year-old boy, not a fourteen-year-old girl. You know, the funny thing is, both boys and girls like seeing sexy girls in co comics. It's it's a weird thing. Um, but I think this was designed for girls. Okay. I think uh, in some of these, like, I'm not sure about this one, but um, I know like uh, her Millie the model stuff or the Patsy Walker ones yeah. had like little pinup, like little. Oh, yeah, no, I've got, I've got the paper dolls. Yeah, I've got the Patsy Walker annual with all the, which Stan did with all the cutout dresses for the, so on. Yeah. Yeah, that was that. definitely meant for girls. Well, but, um, yeah, there's a uh, there's a time, a long time ago, um, Alan. Nowadays, we're not so defining. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well. If, so I well, think... anyway, uh, one hundred and eighty dollars still sounds cheap. Really? Okay. Okay. Well, let's see. Um. Well, it's the only one. Well, it's a record. We got two records in a row. That is awesome. Does it count as a record when it's the only one? Uh, how many? There's only how many is it on the census of this thing? Eight, eight, six, six. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm testing my eyesight. Okay. Um, so, how how about the other grades? Like, if we, uh, if we compare, well, that, how... uh, there is a nine, two, a nine, an eight, and this is the only one that sold a seven point five. So there's nothing. Wow. To, there's nothing really to compare it to. Yeah. But I mean that seems uh that seems like a reasonable price. Um like whenever I buy these things, I, I buy a lot of these ones. I usually pay about 20 bucks yeah. for mid grades. Yeah. Uh if it's a little higher, maybe $30, $40. But so a seven five at like 180, that's to me uh, a fairly high price. 
Well, it's in a slab that's worth forty to fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's, let's move on. Um, I mean, you know, what this show is for the masses. Uh, in this case, this is for the six people who actually have copies of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you have, like, I mean, there's probably lots of raw copies out there. It's just. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, this one's a spec. This is one of the specs that I was referring to. Because uh, of Doom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I believe this is Dr. Like, it's 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 the origin of his, like, uh, little kingdom that he has. I uh, believe. Lap area. Yeah. I believe that's right. I, I'm pretty sure. If I remember the story correctly. I do have this, but I haven't read it. Um, origin of Doctor Doom. It just says Origin of Doctor Doom. Um, yeah, I think it um, talks about him in Lotharia and stuff. Like, I, I'm pretty sure. I remember uh, a while ago reading it. So, um, okay. so um, this restoration includes small amounts of glue on cover. Yeah, so that's um, that's one of those ones that's interesting. So. When it's a small amount of glue, sometimes you can use like a solvent and remove the gl glue. Yeah. Um, whether that means that the cover would then falls off, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> right. Um, and it's a square bound book, so there's going to be glue down the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's see how this did. Oh, it's the only one again. Okay, so another record. Wow, three for three. Um, let's compare it. Yeah, though. Alan, but I think you've just been going around finding comics which are one of ones. <laughs> one of ones. You've got five records. Well, it, it just happened to be that way. So let's uh, let's compare it to uh, the blue blue label, and then we can kind of figure out if it's a good price or not. So the blue label, the seven point five, is about one thousand one hundred dollars. Okay. Um, so in this grade, it should go for about 30 to 40%. Which is where it is. Yeah. So it's right on what you'd expect it yeah. to go for. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the higher the grade, the less percent you get. Like a 9.8 uh, restored goes for like one one twentieth of the value. It's like insanely low. Um, but uh, yeah. So this is right in there. Okay. Not too bad. Okay. Not a record, but well, it is a record, but it's not like a well, you know, the only sale. Um right, uh, there we go. Here's a nice one. This is um an amazing Spider-Man, uh, but the main character on the cover is not Spider-Man, it is Rhino. And this is the first appearance of the Rhino. It is. Um this book uh in theory is a spec uh because there's the craven movie coming out and the rhino is going to be the one of the main baddies in it so yeah, i thought craven was a baddie yeah but it's it's the craven movie so i don't know how that works you know what i mean like when the the baddie is the the main character how does that work you know what i mean yeah yeah but uh yeah this is the the rhino um uh seems like a seems like a reasonably strong sale i'm not i'm not super familiar how much this book goes i mean for this is this is a very popular book um people love this one uh yeah you know an a10 that sounds ooh, so i and yeah that sounds, that's, sounds reasonable i mean it just yeah you know, I, think it sounds a bit cheap. I think it sounds a bit cheap i have bought and sold this one Oh really? So not, I, I was not in that grade, but uh, yeah, okay. So it's not a new record, obviously, because we've yeah, got COVID to deal with. It's, but... it's there or thereabouts with the fair market value, which has established itself up here now. The new market value is around this price, isn't it? Almost spot on. I said the market value of this is 13, 1200 to thirteen hundred, and it is significantly. It's one of these comics that benefited from COVID. Yeah, but what was it before COVID? COVID it has permanently lifted its base value. Yeah. Okay. So, what was it before COVID? Like before five, six COVID, hundred? it was a seven hundred dollar book. It's now, uh, you know, one thousand. It's gone up by five hundred quid. Yeah. So that's like a fifty percent, sixty percent increase in value. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's strange. Um, There's a few books that have done this. You know, they yeah, they did go massively up at COVID and then they came down, but they didn't come down back to the base level. They, they set a new level um, significantly yeah. higher than the COVID base. I think part of the reason for that is that, you know, people remember the COVID prices and they, they're, you know, they don't want to give it up too cheaply. Right. You know, yeah. it, uh, where it's like, it feels like you're just throwing it, you know, throwing that money away. If, uh, if you give it away for like 90% off or something. I'll tell you what I think, Alan, uh, you just might be, you might disagree with this, but I okay. think this is a comic that is bought by fans. Oh yeah. Not a comic. It's probably a comic that's also bought by speculators and, um, the movies and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I think this one is genuinely bought by comic fans who want to keep it and own it. Now, I don't think it, I don't think it's as much a flipper mark comic as as some of the others. And I think the reason this is holding up there is a number of issues of this were bought by proper comic collectors who just keep it. Especially at this grade, I think that would be the yeah. case too. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe in the lower grades, it'd flip. You know, it'd be more of a flipper book. Um, when I find once you try to get it in those higher grades, people try to you know, it's it's for. They either are, uh, have upgraded to it, you know what I mean, where they're they're collectors and they want to yeah, get that higher yeah, grade. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I can agree. I can agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So, how many on the census? I was like, to know. oh, there's quite a lot of this. I think it's. Yeah, five thousand one hundred and sixty-five. Yeah. So, a lot of fans, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, next up, it is. Uh, a first appearance of the Silver Age appearance of the Riddler, I believe. Yeah. I always thought this was a kind of an interesting cover. I actually like this cover. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I like it's, a, it's an interesting pink cover. You know, yeah. there's not too many pink covers, and this is this is that. So, um, and they uh, they I think it's funny how they're kind of punching him and making him spin. <laughs> it's kind of. Oh, you know, I think he's spinning of his own um, volition. Of course. Really. The remarkable ruse of the Riddler. What's keeping the Riddler up? He takes our hardest knocks and blows and bounces them right back. So I think mm -hmm. he, he's got some device there that's sort of acting like some sort of centrifugal repellent. And based on the, the TV series. Uh, TV pilot based on stories. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool thing. And this is from the DC collection. Oh, this is from the Christine Farrell Complete DC Collection. We had one of these last week, didn't we? Yeah, those are crazy. I mean, it's just like, it's amazing that somebody had the Complete DC Collection. I mean, look how clean this is. Just look at it. You don't, you just don't see them like that. 7.5. I, I mean, I'm amazed that's not higher than a 7.5. What's wrong with this? Uh, it's a beautiful copy. I don't know. I don't even see any spine tech. Like maybe yeah. around the staples. There's a couple. There's a there's somewhere around the staples, but I mean, it's not magnets. I would have said this should be I maybe think a little bit right there. A bit but, harsh uh, on that. I think yeah. I think it looks more like an eight five to me. Mm. I don't know. Anyway, no nice copy, and one thousand three hundred eighty. Um, well. My guess, down from COVID, but above the pre-COVID value. Okay, I, I, I would guess. I would guess. I would guess that too. Yeah, and we're right. It's done the same as the. Um, it's done done the same as the Rhino, almost exactly. Um, so pre-COVID, actually eight, slightly above what FMV is, though. Yeah, pre-COVID, sort of seven or eight hundred, and it's now settled out around um, thirteen eighty. So this one's this one also has taken a five hundred dollar hike over COVID. That's a good. I mean, that's a good sign, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but it, you know, you have to also think, like, just to be a bit of the devil's advocate on this, uh, that COVID was four years ago. Yeah, that's no, what I'm exactly. saying. It's established. So there is that. There is a bit of that natural inflation as well, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think this. If you look at, if you kind of do the trend line, I think this is even above that trend line. I think it is. I think it, it was on the Rhino as well. A lot of them do, have come back to the trend line. I think these last two have done better than the trend line. Yeah, I mean they are key books. Like, I mean yeah. they're they're like. I, I almost feel like saying what they always say on uh, Comic Tom: a perpetual key. Uh, I really do feel like that. There, yeah, there's, absolutely. There's, absolutely. 
these these comics that people will want regardless of whatever else is happening in yeah, the world. Yeah, they're going to go out of fashion. It doesn't matter what they do in the movies or, uh, yeah. you know, the comic fans are still going to love them. Um, yeah. And everybody will want one in their collection. Yeah, it's a cool book. Um, so, yeah, so seems like a reasonable price, too. Um, I mean, I always feel like DC books are very under undervalued because, like, okay, which do you think is a bigger hero? Riddler or the Rhino? Or a super villain, I should say. Well, I'd have gone Riddler. He appears more frequently yeah. than Rhino. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's like, I would say he's like one of the top four Batman yeah. villains. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, you got Penguin. You got Joker, Penguin. Mr. Freeze. Uh, no, Mr. Freeze isn't that common, right? He's not in that many stories. I say Riddler's more. Riddler appears in more. Um, Scarecrow. Yeah. Scarecrow, but Scarecrow is not used that much either. So I say Riddler is like maybe even number three of the. the yeah, you know. In the comments below, tell us what <laughs> are the top <laughs> top four or five uh, Batman. Well, do you villains. count Catwoman as a, a, a? No, I don't, because he, you know, I consider her like a love interest, and I consider her um, an antihero. So. Yes. So yeah, so she's you know she's sometimes on the good side, sometimes on the bad side, you know. And oh, another one would be um, uh, Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy, yes. Not in the same boat, but um, I think I would put Poison Ivy as more of a villain than. Yeah, she's more that villainous. One. Generally, she's she's killing people with plants. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this week. Uh, if you want to see the rest of the list, the top five books, go over to Mark's channel. Check it out. Uh, there's some really great ones that Mark really loves. I, I said, Mark, I will. I, I can't put these spiders on your list every week. It's just, it's just too much. But he begged me. He's like, please, Alan. It's been a while. You know, he's been crying. No, just, there is, <laughs> there is going to be a shock horror on my show. <laughs> so, Alan doesn't know what it is yet, but there is going to be a shock horror on my show. So it's worth oh, watching to okay. the, end of the show. Okay, so we'll have to go over there and watch it. Okay, so go over there, click the link in the description. Bye, guys. Bye.